What's up guys, welcome to a brand new D-Drive and you're probably wondering why is Dundum starting the D-Drive in his Evo Lair? Shouldn't he be in his car? Um, earlier today I was in my car, I went to do the thing and one of the questions by Ethan Carpenter was to rank the Alien franchise, just a quick ranking. So I, was, I ranked them right there in the car and then when I got home and edited it, you could hear my air conditioning in the background and I do not want to give you guys a product like that. So as a special gift to you guys, I'm going to do it just like I do all my ranking videos. After the fact, I'm actually going to rank it right here. So the ranking is still in this video, but uh, it's going to be at a certain point after I go and I buy this. And then when I get to the car and I start answering some of the questions that you guys posted on Twitter, then, you're, then I'm going to go back to this video right here. You'll see. So that way you'll get the best quality possible. And uh, I, just, you know, I just have to give you guys a good product. I cannot give you guys crap. So. We're gonna rank the Alien franchise as part of this Drum Dumbs Drive to make it extra special for you guys. So anyway, enjoy the D-Drive. What's up guys? Uh, this is kind of an impromptu Drum Dumbs Drive. Um, Alien 4K is coming out today. I didn't realize it. And uh, I gotta go get Alien on 4K because I love the Alien franchise so much. It's one of my favorite franchises. Uh, on ScreenStream, we actually did a whole Alien franchise thing with Durbania, and I'll put a, a card so you guys can check that out. But uh, uh, yeah, I gotta go take care of some errands too, and uh, I'm gonna drop these books off here. One to Holly Klein and one to Beth S., good friends of mine. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna go to Best Buy, we're gonna get the 4K. And then I got some questions here. I posted on Twitter. I was like, hey, post some topics that you want me to discuss. And I'll try to, I'll try to hit all of them that I got. I, I printed out a bunch of them right here. So your topics. So anyway, uh, I'll see you guys over at Best Buy. I was gonna get the steel book, but my God, look at that. That thing is gorgeous. Um, so, and it's cheaper, it was 15 bucks, but just a regular 4K slip. I mean, wow, guys, you can't beat that. And the other one, the steel book, it's just an egg, whereas this you get the, the xenomorph and all its glory. And yeah, I, I don't mind not having the steel book if the artwork looks like that. So, getting that. And I also picked up glass because I forgot to pick it up last week and I have unbreakable, I have split, so I have to have glass and it's in 4K. And it's got this nice like clear slip, make it look like glass, I guess. So that's kind of cool. Uh, now we're gonna get into the questions. Let's don't waste any time. I apologize about that light right there. Trust me nuts. Lighting, I'm, I'm like a sucker for good lighting in videos, but uh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So, um, just gonna go down the list here. Andrew Burton, these are all from Twitter. Uh, he says, top favorite TV shows from the 80s and 90s. Incredible Hulk was my favorite TV show from the 80s. Uh, 90s, um, Seinfeld. I loved Seinfeld in the 90s. And Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones. Are you guys loving this new season of Game of Thrones? We're two, set, uh, two episodes in. I'm doing uh, weekly videos for those, uh, those episodes. Uh, and, and I'm loving it so far. Uh, Professor Ed McAllister says, Alien to me is the most powerful movie out of the franchise for suspense, even though Aliens is my favorite. A lot of people said the second one's their favorite. My favorite is this bad boy right here. 
But taking those two away, which of what's left best represents what the first two gave us? That's a really good question. I would say Prometheus and Covenant, even though they're not necessarily, or at least Prometheus is not a xenomorph movie. I'm talking about, you know, they're both directed by Ridley Scott, who directed the first one. I think they have the the uh, the heart that the first two have. Although I think there's something to be said about Alien Three, even though there was a lot of meddling. But yeah, as far as quality level goes, I definitely go Prometheus and Covenant. Uh, Bushman Blue says, "When are we getting a review of Assault on Precinct 13?" Get a lot of questions about this one actually. Uh, I have the VH VHS and I have the Blu-ray, so um, definitely soon. Uh, I, I I definitely want to do that. I matter of fact, I just bought someone's watching me i think which is a carpenter movie that i didn't even know existed uh and and i actually saw it there in best buy i put a little clip of it on the video actually itself and i bought it uh, a few days ago so i want to watch all the carpenter's movies eventually um there's only a couple that i haven't seen yet you know some of his deep cuts so i want to watch those eventually and then uh, i can get out a carpenter ranking but yeah to answer your question hopefully within the next like month or two i'd like to get to assault because i have a stack of reviews that I have to get to. I got some patron requests that I got to get to. Patrons, I haven't forgotten about you. So, uh, rankings. My rankings are really taking off, and I'm trying to strike while the iron's hot with those. Plus, I'm enjoying it. So, yeah. Hope that answers your question, uh, Bushman Blue, who also supports me. He, he, he retweets a lot of my stuff on uh, Twitter. I appreciate that. Um, Ethan Carpenter says, what is your quick ranking of the alien films, including Prometheus and Covenant? Okay, Ethan Carpenter, you get what you asked for. And uh, I just had to put this on display. That is the Alien Anthology box set. I've had this for years. Like before I even started my channel, I bought this. This is still one of my favorite box sets. It is gorgeous. You can't really get it like this anymore either. Now they're all the Amore cases, but this actually has like this big fold out thing. The, the housing is shaped like eggs. I'm not gonna open it up and do a whole unbox for you, but this thing is just beautiful. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna rank the Alien franchise. I'm gonna do uh, eight movies, I guess, because I'm going to do the AVPs, and then I'm going to do the four regular uh, movies, and then I'm going to do Prima Prometheus and Covenant. I'm tripping all over myself. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get it on, alright? First off, uh, worst to best, okay? So, in eighth place, we're going to go with AVP, Alien vs. Predator. It's a fun time. I don't mind it at all. It's a PG-13 alien movie. It was fun, that first scene, to see the a alien and the predator go at it. I did get chill bumps during that scene, but everything else around that is kind of just like a, a blah type of movie, you know? And for me, for Alien, I like it to be extra bloody and graphic and all that, and Predator. So this is the weakest of the bunch. Uh, number seven is going to be AVP Requiem. And most people like, go the other way with that. But uh, I, I actually like Requiem if they would just kind of boost up the color a little bit, the brightness, because you can't see the damn movie. But it's got some nice bloody scenes in it. I like the Pred Alien. Uh, it really goes for the jugular and there's the pregnancy scene is not for the squeamish. So I like that they had balls in AVP Requiem. And I'll even say I think it's a little bit underrated. Number six is going to be uh, Alien Resurrection. And Alien Resurrection is a fun movie actually. I like it. But the last act with the human alien is where they completely lost me. They went this way and I went this way and I was good to go. Uh, it, it, but I do love that they brought Ripley back and she's kind of a different character because she's a clone 300 years later and uh, she's got a little bit of an edge to her in this movie and I enjoyed it actually. So next up number five is going to be Alien 3. Uh, the assembly cut I think is excellent actually. I, I, I think it's a four out of five movie um, and it is the version that Fincher intended the most. Mostly. I can't use that until I get to Aliens. But yeah, it's it's a solid ass movie actually. If you haven't seen the extended cut, the assembly cut, get that. And I'll say out of all the documentaries, the one on Alien 3 that's on that box set is by far the most interesting. Okay, number four, and I'll say from here on out, all these are five out of five movies. And I'll even say the Alien franchise to me has more top tier movies than any other franchise. I love the franchise that much. Number four is Prometheus. I love everything about Prometheus. I love that they had the balls to actually make an alien movie that wasn't about the alien. It was about the engineers, uh, uh, you know, about the space jockey. And I was so interested in all that, that, that lore, you know, give me some more of that, that alien lore and it, it was, it works so well. Uh, so Prometheus, it's an ambitious film 
and it's one that you get more and more every time you watch it, you know? But then they go the extra step with my number three, Alien Covenant. I love Alien Covenant to bits. Like, right now, because of the newness, it's probably the one that I watch the most. It gives me the best of both worlds. You get a lot of that Prometheus stuff, but you also get a lot of that uh, Alien stuff, you know? You see the, uh, really, the beginnings of the Xenomorph, how the Xenomorph was made. Uh, and watching, I watched this recently again, not too long ago, and I, I actually don't even mind the CGI alien. It is a little bit too CGI. I prefer my alien, my xenomorph, to be in an actual suit with the shadows and the lighting and you know the, the slippery goo and all that. But still, I love the story of Covenant. Number two is Aliens, uh, one of the greatest action movies ever, sci-fi action movies ever. Uh, and I'll say it's probably one of my favorite military movies because it is kind of a military movie. But uh, I love that, you know, it, this is a full meal of a movie. You know, this is like, it feels like it's like two and a half hours long, but it's great character building along the way. And once the action kicks in, and the action doesn't kick in until well over an hour, I think, it's balls to the wall. It does not let up. It's full on. And it works so well because you are so invested in all these characters that are in uh, all this madness that's going on. So it, it really kept the Xenomorph uh, scary as hell even though there's quite a few of them in this movie. Probably hundreds of them. Uh, and now number one, of course, this bad boy right here that just came out, that cover is so gorgeous. But Alien, to me, is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice, slow burn, but you have this amazing score by Jerry, Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, Ridley Scott's direction in it, I think, is, is perfect. It's, I've watched this movie so many times and I, I get something new out of it every single time, but people seem to forget too, you know, because it does seem like a sophisticated type of film, but it's really like Truckers in Space. The characters are blue, blue collar characters in it, but it has some of the scariest scenes still to this day that I've ever seen. You know, Ridley Scott said he wanted this to be like Texas Chainsaw Massacre in Space. And that's what we got. And that last act, when we think that Ripley's safe, she's not. Uh, and you know, they did such a great job of concealing the Xenomorph for most of the movie. And then when that hand pops out at the end, it, it shocks you. So yeah, it's still, nothing will ever top the, uh, the original Alien as far as the franchise goes. It's just perfection. So that is my ranking. Thank you, Ethan Carpenter, for asking me for that. And now um, back to the Drum Dums Drive. Uh, Charles B., what do you think of the, uh, for the next Alien fran franchise, I can't talk, another sequel? Maybe even a reboot of sorts. Definitely don't want to reboot. Continue with Covenant. Give me that third movie, please. Then jump over to the Blomkamp stuff if you want to. But I don't care either way. Uh, Dave Cage says, end game, obviously. What, what's your over under for final death count? Like real deaths. Not asking who you think, but how many. And do you think they will make the classic Marvel mistake of killing off Thanos? I think Thanos is dead. Yeah, I think I think they're gonna kill Thanos. Um, as far as all the characters, they're not gonna kill the heavyweights. They're not gonna kill Black Panther. They're not gonna kill Spider-Man. They're not. Tony Stark might die in this, <clears throat> or Captain America. I'll say one of those two might die, but not both. Um, I think Bucky is staying dead. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's. So yeah, that that's what I got for that so I'll, I'd say that I'd say let's go five they're killing five people in this okay I had a phone call but I want to get that last question so in chapter two I'm curious because I hated the adult section of the TV movie uh, so they got nowhere to go but up with this movie so I'm really looking forward to it I'm, I'm really looking forward to what um, uh, Skarsgård Bill Skarsgård brings in this chapter uh, yeah, a lot of potential for Chapter 2. I'm excited. I'm really excited. So uh, we'll see what happens. Do I think it's going to be as good as the first one? Probably not just because I like the relationship with the kids. But it, it could. It could surprise me. So anyway, guys, that's it. I picked up this beauty right here, Alien, uh, on 4K. 15 bucks, guys. Go check it out. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link if you want to buy it right here. Uh, if you want to buy it from Amazon. And guys, I don't want you to watch any more of that last half because it's driving me crazy, the uh, the air conditioning going on. So I'll say my goodbyes right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the ranking. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and rum dum out.